Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us at Macaulay Inside Look. My name is Charmaine Ludlow and we're happy to have you tonight. On behalf of Dean Mary Pearl and the whole Macaulay community, we'd like to welcome you and your guests for this very special day. Today is March 22nd, and today is a very special day for our students who were newly admitted to Macaulay. So we would like to congratulate the class of 2025, and we cannot wait until August to meet you. Today, we have our um, director of our special media, um, Robert Small with us today with his students. And I'll just like to give you a background on Robert Small. So Robert Small is the director of new media and digital content here at Macaulay Honors College. And he comes from us from an industry professional who started teaching at Macaulay in 2013. He has operated his own New York based media production company for over 25 years, creating several successful television series and independent documentaries. To his many credits are the creation of award winning international music series, MTV Unplugged, over 30 biographies for the A&E Network, specials for HBO, BET and Showtime. He has produced and directed five independent documentaries, including Something Out of Nothing and I Ain't Scared of You about the life of Bernie Mac, which he received Best Director at the Harlem International Film Festival. Mr. Small has received multiple awards for his work, including the coveted George Forster Peabody Award, three Primetime Emmy nominations, and an honorary MTV Music Video Award. He is currently completing a feature length documentary entitled, You Don't Own Me, the song that said it all. He is currently teaching two classes, classes at Macaulay Honors College, Impact Documentaries, which you will hear a little bit about today, and Digital Storytelling and the Media. So welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, Robert. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks to Macaulay and thank you, Charmaine. I appreciate it. It's great to be here. Macaulay is a great place. And I also want to say congratulations to the class of 2025 before we go any further. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, my background is in production. I started uh, as a director in the theater and ultimately wanted to move into the film business. So I started uh, doing work as a crew member on various kinds of off-Broadway shows and music, music concerts. I eventually started my own company. And because I was around at the birth of cable TV, which is now a dying in industry, um, I got an opportunity to be at the very beginning of a lot of networks and a lot of uh, ventures in cable television. I came to Macaulay as a professional, but I was originally brought in by my friend and ex-partner, Albie Hecht, who was the, one of the founding members of the New Media Lab here at Macaulay. And I started to assist him and help him kind of in a pro bono way and became very enthralled with the fabulous, fabulous student, student body because the students at Macaulay are incredible. And uh, they give back as much as they take, which is very unusual. I, ultimately, I became a full-time uh, director here at the New Media Lab. I added the digital storytelling and digital content creation to the program uh, simply because, you know, as I tell the students when they come in, we no longer can ex escape information coming at us. And most information comes at us either in the form of an advertisement or some sort of documentary information. And it comes to us on streaming services like Netflix, uh, Prime Video, and uh, video platforms like Facebook and Instagram and Snap. And we see it on our phones, it's on, it, it's on our tablets, it's on our watches, it's on our computer screens, it follows us everywhere. And that's not going to change very much in the future. So the idea, of under, better understanding documentary information and how to decipher what's being said to us and shown to us is 
is an important part of the learning experience, but it's also a very important part of life in general going forward, more so going forward than when we had three channels, which you don't remember, and two newspapers. So deciphering information and understanding what the point of the information is and the honesty of the information is also part of what the Media Lab is about. And um, our Impact Documentaries class is a relatively uh, new, new program. Uh, our, what we do is we focus on films that are designed to impact our understanding uh, of issues affecting the social fabric of the world. We all know what those issues are. It's LGBTQ rights, it's income inequality, it's immigration, it's, it's climate change, it's race relations, it's the economy, it's all of the things, it's politics in general now. Uh, all of these things are important and have, these films have impact on our lives and how we view those topics. Um, they inform our feelings and they, our beliefs uh, of all of these different things. And, and very often someone will stop and say to you, you know, I saw this film about race relations or I saw this film about the economy and it made me think differently. And that's really what impact documentaries are. Uh, sometimes the uh, films are made to uh, intentionally inform you and sometimes they inform you unintentionally. It's sort of like propaganda, some films and other films are just honest depictions of what's going on in the world. Sometimes they're hard to watch, sometimes they're hard to believe the content, but it gives you an opportunity to explore it and explore it further on your own if possible. And that's how we use the New Media Lab to, to, ex to expand the students' horizons. We have a lot of fun in the lab. Uh, especially the impact documentaries class, because um, everyone's opinion is welcome. There really are uh, no rights and wrongs when it comes to understanding documentaries or thinking about documentaries or explaining what how it impacts you. And it also, there's no right or wrong on when you're asked to create an outline or create a short documentary about something that's important to you, whether it be a cultural thing, a family thing, or a, a social issue. So it's not so much that it's right or wrong, like perhaps in a, a, the sciences or in math, but it's how you view it and how you're able to explain it and how you're able to explain yourself. Our class, um, what we do in the class specifically is, uh, really three or four main things. We, we, we watch several documentaries in the course of a semester, maybe, maybe four, that are um, classic impact documentaries. Documentaries that have been proven to have an impact on, on their issues uh, here and abroad. Um, we're also visited by a number of speakers. Each, each semester, I bring in about four speakers, generally speaking, their uh, producers, directors, writers, and filmmakers from the documentary film world. This gives the students an opportunity not to have to listen to me all day uh, and able to ask questions and get feedback from uh, professionals in the business who are now working and are out there in the industry. And I, I find that the real world experience is exactly what students are looking for. And we try uh, very hard to meet that demand. Um, we also learn how to structure film outlines, take ideas and turning them in, turn them into a story arc, a beginning, a middle, an end. Uh, we learn how to pitch those ideas. So if you have an idea and you want to talk about the importance of manufacturing in the Bronx, where do you start that story? What do you talk about in the middle? And what do you want the viewer to come away with at the end? And this is part of creating a story arc and you being able to understand that, that story in a way that you could pitch it to somebody and get them interested in your film. Both is uh, someone who may distribute your film, someone who may finance your film or give you a grant to produce your film, or someone that you want to be included in the film as an interviewee or something along those lines. So learning how to express your ideas to others, sometimes abstract ideas, if you would, 
is a real critical part of learning, I think, and a very valuable part of where you're going to go in the future when you, when you leave school. Um, in our second section, in our first section, we study uh, outline development and pitching of ideas. In our second section, we actually have students um, go on and create short documentaries of their own. Uh, the second section, which is being taught right now, our, our group is uh, currently in the process of outlining their, their ideas and ultimately to start shooting and editing. We, we've, been, we've been a little bit interrupted by the COVID situation and as much as the hands-on communication between students, the getting together with a student and working to edit with them is now uh, reserved for the, the, Zoom, the Zoom environment, but it hasn't stopped us. And in a lot of ways it's, it's helped us, it's made us dig deeper into what our, our ideas are and what we want to, to have uh, come of them and what to include in the idea and what not to include in the idea. Those things are critical to, to shaping a film. You, you can't include everything and you have to have things in there that, that make the point you want to make and you need to stay focused on that. And that's some of the part of our lesson. Um, and a lot of people say, well, you know, Macaulay doesn't have a lot of too many filmmakers uh, coming through. We have a lot of people who are interested in finance, computer sciences, but they're on a medical path. They're entrepreneurs. They want to do something with ideas they have in the marketplace, create a startup. And I don't think there's anything more critical in any of those fields than being able to explain yourself in a digital storytelling format because I know the person who takes care of my teeth has a website and she uh, creates content that make people feel that she has a good service as a dentist, uh, things like that. Try to think of digital content really as just a communic communications tool at this point. So nothing is stricter really about communicating than impact documentaries because the impact of the film is really the goal of the filmmaker in most cases. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say is that, you know, digital content is important uh, to, the, to, to the learning experience and to the experience of you um, absorbing content, becoming an educated content viewer. Uh, there are three, Three takeaways from the impact documentaries class that I think are the most important to me. You can ask the students what they think, but this is what I feel is the most important. The most, uh, the number one thing for me is understanding the ethics behind a documentary that you're watching or the ethics behind something you're creating. Because we all know now that things are put into films or into news reports or into, you know, when you watch something like 60 Minutes or Frontline, which has impact documentary content, that things are put in to get you to feel and think a certain way. And what we do is we watch these things and we talk about, well, is that, so, is that honest or is that trying to manipulate me? Am I getting both sides of the story? Do I need both sides of the story? Uh, the ethics of filmmaking is really, really important. I joke with the class sometimes, um, you can do an interview on the street and ask somebody what they think of uh, the Knicks and they'll give you an answer. And then you can, someone unethically can take that answer and have it connected to a comment of what do you think about the Senator? And they say what they think about the Knicks and you use that and that's unethical. And that's done sometimes in films, certainly in news. So to learn or to try to understand or to try and uh, have some um, relationship to the vibe of this information is, is, is sort of an art form unto itself and very important, I think, for educated people going out into the, the business world. Uh, so ethics is my number one thing. The production is the second thing we cover. And by production, we when we watch our films, I say to the class, well, what did you see? You know, well, I saw two people sitting in a chair and then I saw a shot of a plane and then I saw one person sitting in a chair. And, and then we talk about, well, where, was the, where were those chairs placed? 
were those chairs placed in, in, in an area that was supposed to give you information? Was it in front of a pile of garbage? Was it in a fancy office? Was it in a home? And what was the purpose of choosing those locations and having it married to the, the airplane shot? Uh, this is of course all abstract discussion, but it gives you an idea of how we look at things in terms of the visuals and how it matches the audio of a documentary. We study the best ways to shoot interviews, close-ups, medium, wide shots. We study the art of doing an interview. Uh, for example, when you sit down with somebody that you're going to talk to that you want to include in your documentary, you need to have a, a style or an approach to getting them to feel comfortable talking to you if you're especially in the impact documentary environment. So if you're going to talk to somebody about something, a, a loss of life or a race issue or an LGBTQ issue or, 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 or some kind of situation that's uncomfortable, you need to take the time and you need to have the relationship with that person, even if you had just met them on that day or you've had a short phone call with them prior to that. So that's part of the art form and how to create a documentary and how to um, prepare for that kind of production. Then there's also the visual stuff, which is fun. Uh, we didn't get a, to do a lot of it this year because of COVID, but there's the lighting and the audio elements. So in addition to studying the end result, we also study how you make it and how you do an outline and what's the importance of an establishing shot, those kinds of things. And I guess lastly, um, I call it the bonus of impact documentary classes because it's kind of a bonus for me because I, I love to talk about these things. Impact documentaries deal with the kinds of issues that I talk about all day. They deal with, like I said, race or immigration issues or LGBTQ issues, uh, income inequality, climate change, and on and on and on. But the, the bonus in this class is that you get to talk about those things with your peers in the class. And in addition to the production and the creation of it, you have these fabulous, fabulous discussions about these issues. And that to me is like a real bonus because I come away sometimes uh, mesmerized by the, the realizations of some of these uh, documentaries and, and the discussions that come out of the class. Uh, I have a few notes here. So um, I think rather than me continuing to talk about how fabulous the impact documentaries sections are, I'd like to introduce you to one of our students, let them tell you a little bit about what we've done in the past. Uh, I have three students here who are going to kind of share with you some of these ideas. And I'd like to start by introducing uh, Flora Lenahan who is my student for two semesters, a great filmmaker, and she's here today. So Flora, um, I don't know if I have to stop my video, but I'll try. Hi everyone and welcome. So the two classes that I took with Professor Small are documentary filmmaking and impact documentaries most recently last semester. So in documentary filmmaking, I got to work with a small team to produce a short documentary about a greenhouse keeper in the Bronx. And that film went on to win the 2020 CUNY Film Festival Award for the best undergraduate uh, short documentary film. So I would like to share a little excerpt of that film right now. My name is Janine and I am a gardener slash greenhouse keeper here in the Bronx and I am in charge of growing vegetables for the tenants in this apartment building and keeping any other existing plants alive for any future seasons. I studied horticulture at Bronx Community College uh, two years ago. I got into horticulture when I was in the sixth grade. 
we did a lot of cool experiments that got me into plants and just like anything outdoorsy. That's sort of when I knew I really enjoyed science and I wanted to study it further. Well, healthy and organic food is hard to come by, especially in the Bronx. In general, if I were to go to the supermarket, healthy food would be very expensive compared to like Oreos or whatever. Growing it can actually be cheaper in many ways, depending on the food that you're growing. The food in the greenhouse is meant for the tenants here. Being able to grow the food for them here enables them to have one less thing to worry about. One thing I think we all have in common is food. So being able to grow it for the people here, it makes me happy. Okay, so that just gives you a little idea of the kind of work I was able to produce in the documentary filmmaking class. And that project inspired the project that I did for Impact Documentaries, where I worked with a small team to work on the pre-production phase of making a documentary film. So we had to consider uh, what kinds of people we wanted to interview, which demographics our film was focused towards, what would be the aesthetic look of the film, as well as how to increase audience engagement through social media and what kind of budget we needed. So although it was a hypothetical film, these are real world factors that my team and I had to consider and include in a preparation, in a, a presentation rather, um, for the class. So the presentation itself was a great experience since I myself am going into the field of documentary filmmaking. And a main step towards getting your film produced is pitching it to the people who will, who will provide the funding of the film. So Professor Small had us do two rounds of pitching the film to the class who gave excellent feedback and it was overall just a great way to learn how a film is produced in the real world and the implications of pitching it to investors. That's great, thank you, Flora. Um, I'm not sure if I can ask you a question or two in this format, but I'll try. Um, did you feel uh, when you were uh, getting feedback from the other students that it helped, helped you shape the look of the film? Did you go into it knowing that you were going to have these, uh, I'm talking about the first film, uh, the, the first class, you know, these fabulous close-ups and rack focuses and that kind of thing. Uh, did the students help you gauge that? I think the students did. It was definitely good to get feedback from my peers and having a group of classmates that come from such diverse backgrounds that they mentioned things that I wouldn't even consider. And I think my classmates also helped the shaping of the story. You know, I might have included certain sections that didn't really relate to the main focus. So having the group provide that feedback really helped me hone in on the focus of the film as well as its look. That's great, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay. I think I'm back on. Charmaine, please let me know if I'm not. Uh, thank Good you very time. much. The, the history of uh, the new media lab deals with content pretty consistently. When it started as a transmedia storytelling class, um, specifically, it was all about taking content and story and being able to exploit it over no less than three um, social media platforms. And that that's actually a fabulous base for understanding how films are different in 2020, 2021 than they were back in 2000. Uh, stories and characters are developed in a way that they can be talked about by people online in different chat groups and in different communities. And though we don't have a transmedia storytelling class this semester, one of the great things about that class is that it allows you to, or let's 
dives into the understanding of how to create communities online and what kind of impact you can have uh, with communities online. So it does relate to the impact documentary in that regard. Um, in addition to that, the New Media Lab curated the CUNY Film Festival for the last five years. And what I mean by that is that Macaulay Honors College hosted the CUNY Film Festival, which took films from all 26 campuses across CUNY. And in working with uh, judges and um, tallying winners and creating categories, the CUNY Film Festival was actually generated in its entirety by the New Media Lab. So that's one of the feathers in our cap. Unfortunately, again, because of COVID this year, uh, we weren't able to continue that, but we're hoping to get back on track uh, uh, very soon. And some of the speakers that have come on board during COVID have been very, very influential in the uh, documentary field. We had um, uh, Jenny Baskin come to visit us from a company called uh, Impact Films. And they're responsible for a fabulous series of six hours or more actually on uh, Netflix called Immigration Nation. They also are the executive producers of many films and um, Icarus about the uh, drug scandal in Russia with Russian athletes uh, and several other major, major impact documentaries. We were also visited by Susan McLaurie, who is the um, head of Shine Global. Shine Global being a fabulous, fabulous organization that creates uh, documentaries for children at risk at different levels around the world. They've also uh, won tremendous acknowledgement from the film and public, film community and the public, uh, Academy Award winners, uh, various Emmys and those kinds of things. So the students are really exposed to fabulous, fabulous filmmakers, but they also get um, feedback from their peers. So the two of those things working together uh, is, is just makes it a real comfortable environment. Um, I think it might be time for me to introduce another one of our students who uh, was, has been with us for a while. She's very, uh, she has been very good at creating unique subject matter for her films. And one of the films we, I wanted her to talk about was one of my very special documentaries, impact documentaries, but I'll let her do that talking. I'd like to introduce um, Salma, Salma Ali, and I think she's here somewhere. Um, I will turn off my camera. There we go. Hello and welcome. So um, one of the documentaries that he was speaking about is uh, Waiting for Superman, which is an incredible film that discusses, you know, like the faults in our education public school system. Um, this film talks about the faults in the system and what we can do or ways that, you know, wants to bring light, shed light on the situation and, you know, ways to help it. Um, this film was incredible because, you know, it talked about a lot of the faults that we're not seeing and it gave us an inside look on what's really the matter, what's the issue in the system, um, whether it's the teachers and tenure or whether it's, you know, the students or the neighborhood that you just so happen to be born and raised in or, you know, family and low income. So this film gave a lot of background on, you know, all the different aspects of why the public school education system is, you know, has many faults. Um, the best part about, you know, watching this film was being able to um, recognize how the film was made. So we talked a lot about um, the voice behind it, the intent, the ethics, which um, Professor Robert talked about. Um, we talked about, you know, whether it was ethical. Um, uh, just the purpose of the film and what it, what, it, what it did to the audience or who the intended audience was. So that was a lot of the great aspects that it was about watching the film because it gave a lot of information, but it was simplified enough for a great audience to, to watch it and be able to understand um, what's really happening behind the scenes. Um, so that was one of the great things about watching this film while being in this class because I was able to recognize the different things about the film, whether it was the graphics or how it was filmed or how it, how it portrayed the faults in the system to just somebody who doesn't know much about it. And it gave a lot of background information that was portrayed very well for us to you know, ask questions. Why is the public school system this way? What is it that we can do as individuals to help it? Or is it really in our hands? Is it a greater matter that we just need to be able to raise awareness for? 
Um, and, you know, this is just part of the great thing about this course. I've been in it for two semesters now, both um, sections of the impact documentaries. And it's been great because I'm able to not just, you know, watch these films that, you know, we talk about social justice, income inequality, gender equality, LGBTQ matters. Um, we're able to discuss, you know, further, what is it about this film that is, is an impact to you or to anyone watching. And again, like discussing with my fellow classmates, um, different perspectives or what we got out of it, or if it changed our original perspective on it, or um, just sharing ideas about it, which is really awesome. Um, another great thing about this course is I'm not really in the documentary or filmmaking industry. Um, I mean, like for major wise, um, I'm actually on the pre-health track. So I plan to pursue um, PA school eventually. So it's great because although it's not really in my major, um, it's taking a course like this is, you know, incredible for me to be able to watch things about social justice and be able to, you know, just get more ideas of what's really going on and be able to share and discuss these ideas with my classmates, with my professor, um, meet all these amazing filmmakers and, and guests that, that come to our class to talk about these things. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Uh, I'd, I'd like to ask you a quick question. Could you could you tell the viewers here who uh, what you're working on in terms of uh, your short documentary you'll be making for the class? Yeah, absolutely. So for um, this semester, we're each making a short film, our own documentary. So I've decided to do um, my impact documentary on how the the hijab is portrayed in um, media or portrayed in films to be exact. Um, I'm focusing specifically on Netflix movies, um, a lot of TV shows and things that you know we're watching. Um, the hijab, um, if, if anyone doesn't know, it's the headscarf that women wear in Islam, uh, Muslim women. Um, and so it's being misrepresented in films and media. So I wanna shed light on what the hijab actually means to Muslim women and how it's actually, you know, the opposite of what it's being represented on in, in movies and films that are out. Um, so a lot of the women that are, you know, I'm interviewing for my film, you know, they feel very empowered by the hijab and they wanna talk about, you know, why they wear it and that it's, you know, they're not forced to wear it. and um, it's not an oppressive thing and it's just to basically shed light on how the how films are you know misrepresenting it and what it actually means to Muslim women. That's great. Thank you very much Sama. Thank you. I'm sure it's going to be a great film. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, it's difficult to actually nail down what's so special about the impact documentaries class. But I think from talking with the students or hearing this from the students, you can understand that it's, it's an amazing experience when you have a, in this, in this semester, a screen with 14 students and there are 14 different fabulous ideas ranging from things like uh, growing, growing, uh, growing in the Bronx or on rooftop in the Bronx to the story of the Hajib or other things that we talk about. And you, you get 14 fabulous ideas that we all communicate with. Some of the films have, I mean, we, some of the films we've watched are really slick and have produced um, or slickly made or well, well produced and financed um, like the 13th by Ava DuVernay which is a fabulous film about race and uh, the interesting things that came out of that. And I won't talk too much about that because I believe uh, our next speaker will. But there are also films like Gasland that we watch, uh, which is a film by a filmmaker named Josh Fox, which is not such a um, expensive, slick film, but has tremendous impact when it talks about fracking. Uh, the things, it's a great film for us because there are a lot of things to question as to why they're included in the film and ask why there are a lot of things that aren't included in the film. But there are all of these things that are discussed amongst us. And uh, a lot of our assignments are just watching great films, which I don't know about you, but when I was a student, I would have really embraced that uh, as, a, as a homework assignment. The uh, reading is primarily to get students to think in terms of structure, because structure is so important to the, the financing and the development of films and um, the ideas behind the story. 
So uh, let me uh, bring out one more student who uh, has had some great success in the class. And she'll talk a little bit about her, her first semester and her upcoming uh, class uh, documentary, I'm sorry, in our current semester. Please welcome Emily Larcher. Hello, Emily. Hi, Professor. Hi, everyone. Um, first off, congrats, congrats to class of 2025. Um, so I've taken impact documentaries last semester and this semester. And um, I think one of the mo most definitive assignments I've had was to watch the documentary 13th and to write a paper analyzing it in terms of things I've learned from the documentary. Um, the documentary itself basically covers um, American history from the end of the Civil War, the abolishment of slavery up until the contemporary era, covering the new mold of systematic oppression within the United States. Um, the documentary, the new sort of Jim Crow is this um, systematic incarceration of people of color, which is often motivated by political gains and also financial gains by corporations. Um, I thought that that assignment profoundly impacted me in learning about the gradual history of this political oppression, especially throughout the 60s and 70s, how um, government officials like during the Nixon administration or even the CIA worked to sort of um, dismantle civil rights groups as well. So I do think that this course has taught me a great deal about um, consuming media in terms of its history, in terms of how it's presented as well. Um, during this semester, one project that I will be working on as for my final project will be sort of an impact documentary about composting, because I've always been very interested with sustainability. Um, the previous semester, actually, Flora and I worked on a project about um, ways in which we created documentary sustainability, and I wanted to do sort of an extension of that, because working on composting within um, my um, apartment building, as well as my neighborhood, has sort of profoundly changed my life in, in terms of um, how I consume produce, how I um, say my scraps, and also in terms of the greater picture, composting is something that can positively impact our environment in terms of preventing the emission of harmful gases that would contribute to climate change. So I think the beauty of these courses is that, um, you know, what impacts your life can change from person to person. And I think that it's great getting to hear about everyone else's documentaries in class because it's sort of a way for us to learn more about one another, about you know these sort of topics that mean the most to us and sort of changed our lives the most. And yeah, and I think also it's just a great opportunity to consume media with um, people from other CUNYs. So you always get a new sort of perspective and debate. So that's been really exciting. That's great, thank you. Uh, the uh, film you're working on now, you're filming it basically in your home, is that right? Yeah, um, you know, I think, um, you know, the really cool thing about this course especially is that, um, you know, we can still sort of make our own impact documentary even with the pandemic going on. So something that I was working on that we were sort of discussing is maybe some reenactments of how I discovered the composting program in my apartment and also, sort of footage of the garden as well as the composting section. So I think um, sort of um, creati thinking creatively outside the box has been really exciting, you know, like sort of filmmaking isn't as intimidating as I thought it was before this course. Thank you. And thank you very much. Well, we've heard from three of our fabulous students and thank you. Um, you know, I, I do want to say that Impact making film or making digital content, which is what we teach really in impact documentaries and at the New Media Lab, is in fact a real lifestyle and business. It's not just the art of creating the content, but there are many, many opportunities to create careers and startups and uh, be part of other people's ideas. The New Media Lab recently was um, involved with the NYU. Tandon School of Engineering in a program that was known as the R Lab, R standing for reality, where uh, stories were created in an augmented and virtual reality environment. Something that we'll be doing in the future that we've never done in the past. So that's all very experimental. But from what I could tell you is that the companies that came to 
talk to potential students to be interns or to work at their company. Uh, we're very, very interested in uh, students who knew how to tell a story, who knew how to structure a story, uh, create an arc, a beginning and a middle and an end, and to understand what people are thinking when they watch that information. So we, we, we teach that in the uh, impact documentaries class in a new media lab. And um, I'm sorry, we do, you, you popped up. Uh, we teach that in the impact uh, documentaries class. And I guess what I'm trying to say is there are many tentacles to what the new media lab offers our students. And you should investigate all of them because it's a, a fabulous class. And we hope to be back more hands-on uh, next starting in September, that's our goal. So if you have any questions, we'd love to answer them. And uh, I would love to see any students who are interested to feel free to contact me. Uh, my information is on the Macaulay website and I'd be happy to either meet with you or Zoom with you or talk to you about the potential of the class and how it might be right or not right for you. So uh, feel free to do that and thank you very much. Thank you, Charmaine. And congratulations to the class of 2025, absolutely. Thank you so much. This was so fascinating. And I loved hearing um, all of the different views of impact documentaries for each of the students. Um, I think my question would be for, I, and this will be for the whole panel, especially um, how did you learn about this class and why did you choose it? So I can go. Uh, how I learned about this is that I have actually taken Professor Small's classes for three semesters now. I first took, um, I helped produce the 2019 CUNY Film Festival, where we learned about aspects of production, how to put an event like this together. I was on the production team, and I also interviewed attendees and winners of the CUNY Film Festival. And I just learned that uh, Professor Small is an excellent professor. I really like the energy that he brings to every class and how he's very experienced in the world of film and television. And that's the field that I want to get into. So that's why I signed up for his documentary filmmaking class the following semester. And then a year later, which was last fall, I took impact documentaries. Great, right, thanks for sharing that. Um, so me personally, um, you know, it is emphasized in my four years of being a Macaulay student that there are level upper level courses being offered at Macaulay. Um, our advisors are always rec recommending us to take them. It's um, always emphasized that these are excellent courses with amazing professors and turned out to be true. Um, so I, I wanted to take this course, um, uh, impact documentaries because I wanted to do something outside of my field, something different. I wanted to explore um, a new part of, you know, what Macaulay has to offer. And I was really happy with my choice. Great. Um, yeah, um, I've always been fascinated sort of by like filmmaking as well. So um, I always wanted to have the opportunity to sort of get more of a hands-on experience learning about sort of the framework of filmmaking, the inner workings of it. So, so that's been really exciting. And also, um, I just wanted a chance to take more Macaulay courses in my senior year. So this um, and also um, the thesis course, which you might have seen in the previous live stream, are like really great classes to think. I think it's just really fun to sort of have the ability to, you know, have um, the chance to like exercise yourself more creatively as well. Thank you for sharing that. And I think that speaks to the liberal arts and science part of it. So I know you said one, I think Salma, you were on a pre-med track, pre-health, and here it is that you can take these different courses while doing your sciences and engineering. So it's a great balance um, to the learning experience. We do have a question from the audience and I will just go ahead and read that. So it says students are lucky to have one of the true stars of our industry as a professor. My question is, do you think that story or character is more important to an impact doc? I, I think both are important to impact an impact doc. I don't know which one would be considered more important, but uh, probably the story, because it, you want people to understand a big picture about something or a, a movement 
um, whether it be something as broad as climate change or that kind of thing. The uh, characters involved, though, are, are really critical to telling the story. You know, a documentary doesn't just happen. You kind of cast the talent. Uh, you don't cast actors, but you, you talk to people and hopefully find people who can express themselves in a way that serves what you're trying to explain in a documentary. So it's sort of like interviewing for a job. You have to find the right person. I think that answers the question. The first part I wrote, the first <laughs> part of this question I wrote. Oh, that's why you're a star here, Robert. Thank you. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> so there is another question and it's, I'm going to, let's see. Has working on your own documentary project changed how you watch documentaries? This is for the whole, the whole panel. Um, I can answer that. So for me personally, it has. Um, I think just generally with taking this course, we're not just watching it to, you know, understand the storyline. It's more to understand the ins and outs of it or the graphics, the audio, um, just like analyzing every part of the film and not just the story. And that's been really helpful in making our own film because we want to be able to have that same impact when people watch our film. We want to, you know, be careful with ethics. We want to make sure that it's ethical. We want to um, broaden our audience, make sure that, you know, anyone who watches is going to get a good understanding of it and, and feel that they can leave it with, you know, questions and, and be able to, you know, have a better idea of what, what it is that our documentary is about. Sorry. Uh, there is another question. It says, how would you say that documentaries today are different from those in recent decades? Um, I guess I'll jump in for this one. Um, okay. I do think that um, there's more of an uh, inaccessibility when it comes to filmmaking with documentaries. Um, something that we kind of discussed the previous semester when, when we met with a producer was sort of the release of documentaries because there's more availability in streaming services as well. So I think maybe the future the documentary documentaries are going through is, you know, um, they're heading towards more streaming services and also more people have accessibility to film things with you know a camera your iphone so i do think that more people have the chance to sort of tell these stories yeah I, if i can add you know one of the things we do talk about in the class is the evolution of the documentary uh, clearly the technology has made documentary filmmaking uh much easier you know we talk about nanook of the north which was done in 1925 where a film crew went to uh, film eskimos and you can't imagine the size of their camera or what what they were capable of shooting with it or not shooting with it because of that and then you cut to 2021 where people can really do a high quality film on a phone and that changes things um it allows for a, a lot of documentaries it allows for a lot of footage to be captured that you may not have been able to capture with a big old camera and uh, sometimes it makes people uncomfortable to have a big film crew in the room and they don't talk quite the same way in an interview and they don't give you the information you want but with a little camera that you can put on a stand the, the conversation you start to forget about it it doesn't be it's not that intrusive in your in your uh, in the room so the you know, technology has a lot to do with that there's also, and let me just add one thing, there's also some fears that we discuss in the class, which include the deep fake and having people's images in a documentary where they're not saying the things that you're hearing. Uh, that's a problem facing, you know, the ethical problem that's facing documentary filmmaking, certainly in the news industry and social media, but possibly, you know, in uh, full length feature documentaries that we have to be careful as to what we're seeing and being able to believe what we're hearing. So that's technology is a, a bit of a trick when it comes to that. Thank you. There is another question from the audience. How much time per week do you think you've spent on making your documentary? So this is for everyone, all the students. Um, so Professor Small has been guiding us, um, you know, we started early on in the semester so that, you know, we don't cram and we're able to, you know, have time to ask questions and get feedback from everybody um, and to be able to, you know, strengthen our story before we even start documenting um, and, you know, interviewing people. Um, so we're focusing now on like 
our story, our, our story arc and being able to um, have a purpose and to make it small enough for it to not, you know, go off on tangents and to focus on what it is that our purpose really is. So week by week, we've been working on small segments of things in order to build up for the actual filmmaking part of it. Not sure if anyone else wanted to Okay. I can just say that I start talking about the final project in the, probably the third class. And by the end of the semester, it's the focus of what we do in class. It allows students, first of all, it allows students who have never made a documentary or done anything like that to feel that they can ramp up. It's not, okay, where's your documentary, but you say, here's your story. What are you going to use in your story? Who are you going to interview? It's very important that you have an idea that you could achieve. You can't just come up with an idea how you're going to travel all around Europe on a plane and shoot these, because that's not a doable thing. But uh, to keep the story in a framework into something you can achieve. And we, we, do, we do it straight along and have presented to the class in all the stages so the students can get feedback. And by the end, they all feel very comfortable showing their cuts to everybody. And that's how we get there. So it's really the back half of the semester that the final project is the focus. Of that. Thank you, Robert. Um, I know that we're coming down to the closing, but I think there's um, one thing that we spoke about just before we came on the air. And knowing that we have a new cohort of students coming in for the class of 2025. And you guys remember that day when you found out that you were accepted. Um, I know that I asked if I can, if it's all right to share where you all came from in terms of high schools. So I know for Emily, you came from the Young Women's Leadership Academy. Uh, yes, the Young Women's Leadership School of Astoria. We have like um, sister schools in like um, other parts of Queens, Manhattan. And I believe Sama from Midwood High School. Yes. And Flora, you came from Edward R. Murrow High School, right? So right. If, if you can just take us back to when you first got your acceptance and now the overarching, you are now in your senior year, all of you, what is the best thing um, that you can say about your Macaulay experience? Well, I remember that day very distinctly because I got the acceptance email while I was in my AP economics class. And I had my phone out on my desk because I was anticipating this email. And when I saw it, I exclaimed and everyone turned around to look at me. I said, I got into Macaulay. <laughs> so definitely was very excited for that and to join the Macaulay community. And I would say one of the best parts of being a Macaulay student is having access to such a wide variety of classes. You know, the four main Macaulay seminars really uh, brought me out of my comfort zone. I'm mostly an arts person. I studied music and film growing up. So having to take a more uh, STEM-based class or sociology really broadened my horizons, just like how Salma is a med student taking film as well. I think that's what really makes Macaulay such a special program. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to add on to that. Um, the resources and the guidance. Um, we have amazing guidance from our advisors or access to so many people who work for who work in Macaulay that can help us with so many different things. Um, there are so many resources that we're exposed to. And like Flora said, um, we have so much access to these courses that are not within our um, majors or career paths that are really incredible to take because, you know, it is widening our horizons and it's helping us, you know, gain knowledge on things that we wouldn't normally, you know, focus on. Thank you. Um, yeah, I definitely agree too. I think um, the beauty of Macaulay as well is that, um, you know, there, there, there's this like large support system and also the ability to try out new things that you might not have tried out with film or even um, sort of like other courses as well, because we also have our science courses and also learning about technology. Thank you so much for sharing that. I know that the students will appreciate hearing that from you, getting that inside look as well. Um, there's just one more question and let me see if we, and we do have time. What does AI bring to documentary filmmaking? Well, um, 
AI, um, I've seen augmented reality used in storytelling to create um, characters from the past that could be put on the screen or interact with uh, current contemporary environments. I've also, um, I don't know that artificial intelligence necessarily uh, will affect documentary filmmaking, but I do know this, seeing how far we've come in both augmented reality and uh, virtual reality, the potential for what's going to be happening in storytelling uh, four or five years down the road is pretty incredible. In my other class, digital storytelling in the media, we, last week we had a class on um, aug augmented real, uh, virtual reality. And the, this, the focus of it was this new Jackson Pollock exhibit at the Pollock uh, barn on Long Island. And students were allowed to see the history of the Jackson, uh, Jackson uh, of the Pollock experience. And while he was working in the room, feel as though they're in the room that he was painting in. So that technology, that story may not have been a documentary as we know it, but the potential for that to become a documentary, I know uh, Professor Widmar used, um, uh, or was hoping to use a virtual augmented reality in the, uh, the, the Morgan Library project that he was working on. So the potential for it is incredible. And the New Media Lab is exploring that all the time. So it, it keeps me involved and it keeps me learning this stuff as we go along because clearly I'm from a generation past and most of my experiences are terrestrial. But there are a lot of extraterrestrial experiences that are coming our way and it'd be great if the, the students can in, embrace that. I don't know if that answers the question, but it, I gave it a shot. I think you did excellent. Thank you. So I just want to say we're going to wrap up, but I want to thank the panelists for being here with us tonight. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Emily, Flora, and Salma for taking time out and discussing you. your work in the class, giving us a sneak peek into impact documentaries. So for students who will be accepting the offer from a colleague, just look out for these upper level courses. So you do have your four seminar core seminar courses from a colleague, but we do also offer upper level division courses for you as well. So please work with your advisors. And again, congratulations on behalf of Dean Mary Pearl and the whole Macaulay community. Thank you for joining us. Have a Thank good you. night. Take care.